Hey everyone, it's Jason. Uh, today we have Star Wars The Deck Building Game by Fantasy Flight. Um, so this is a one versus one game. Uh, so one side controls the Rebel Alliance, the other side controls the Galactic Empire. Um, yeah, so it's kind of interesting. So it's not necessarily like Jedi versus Sith. Uh, which is kind of interesting, because that's, that's where you would have thought they would have went with this. Uh, but they just did, did but again, also maybe saying, you know, they could have just went good versus evil. Meh, a little bit murky on that sometimes too, so. Uh, but it's basically the two sides. You, you play as one side. Now, just to throw us out right off the bat, it even has in the rule book says if you buy a second set, so if you buy two full boxes, then you could technically play a 2v2 game, so you could have uh, two players be the Alliance, or, uh, the Rebels, and two players be the Empire. Um, there's just not enough cards, there's not enough starter stuff in here to do that. Um, I, I get why they didn't just throw it in a box and make it a four-player game that way. Um, so I would have come up with twice as many cards, and it's easier just to save that for expansions, because what they can easily do is do very similar to what, um, Renegade Studios has done with the like, um, Transformers game, and, and, uh, like, G.I. Joe game, and stuff like that, where you release another core box set, um, later on, that has enough characters to play both sides, and then now you can mix them all together, um, that's probably, I'm guessing, they're gonna do, rather than just release tiny expansions, they'll probably release a second core set, which will have some more some other characters. Lots well, of these characters seem to be based off of... I really haven't, like, dug through and looked through every single card yet. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be kind of going through this the same as everybody else. But it looks like it's based off more or less the original trilogy, uh, episodes 4, 5, and 6. Um, although I did notice some of the characters that looked like they were off some of the side stories. Like, um, there might be some characters from... Uh, oh, what's the name of that movie? Um, I don't, not, uh, oh, I can't even think of it. It's the one that comes after, or right before, uh, or in between A New Hope and, um, Empire. A name escaped me for some reason. Wow. Um, alright, so I want to point out one thing, though, before we even jump in to the book and see how the game is played and then we'll look at the cards that way if we go over the rules you have some idea of how it how it plays um so i like how this was set up so i just unwrapped the cards and stuck them back in here but we have all our different uh components here so we have some purple ones which are uh for taking uh keeping eye on damage we have yellow ones which are your resources and we have a single white one in here to keep track of the force uh, cause some cards use the force. But that's a little, like, spot in there. Now, I, obviously you're probably gonna keep dumping these back in the bag or they're gonna get staggered. But what I did like about the design here is there's probably enough room, there should be enough room in here to sleeve all your cards. Uh, whether you use, uh, penny sleeves, which are a little bit longer, or, like, standard, like, higher quality sleeves. Um, so here's your main deck of cards. Here's your generic, everyone can buy cards. And then they actually had the uh two starter sets of cards and the base cards which we'll get into um in each little separate spot here so like right off the bat it's like boom boom i can just pick these up these are the cards your characters start with this is the main deck everyone can use or this is the deck that sits by itself and then this is the a uh, general buy deck this is the main deck which now is sorted here by like neutral rebel and uh a lot empire cards um but then you can just shuffle them all and stick them back in here. Now, if you don't sleeve, there's probably enough room in here to put a second expansion. Even if they come with another full base set or you buy a second base set. But if you sleeve, you'll easily run out of room. Um, Alright, so we're going to hop into the instructions quick before we get to the actual car components. First of all, just in case you're not familiar with what is a deck building game. A deck building game is where each player starts with a basic set of cards that do very limited stuff. Usually minor, like, purchasing powers, maybe an attack power, um, maybe gaining a card, something very simple. 
And then as you play through the game, you use resources of some sort to purchase new cards and make your deck bigger and better. But throughout the game, then, as you're doing that, every any player is always going to end up with a different deck. Uh, and then every time you play, you potentially can end up with a different deck. And I always say potentially because that's all based on what you decide to buy. If you constantly keep buying the same cards every time because you seem to like that strategy, then your deck's going to end up the same every time. But that's your choice. Um, yeah, so each player ends up with... Now, this one's a little bit different than some of the other ones because one player controls one side, one controls the other. Now, they have cards that are basically the same for the starter deck. But then when you start breaking down into the different other colors, um, the Rebel cards, there's going to be some comparisons to the Empire cards. Like, oh, these two cards are basically the same, just one for each side. But then they're going to slowly, as the um, power of them increases, they'll probably get differences between them. Because um, I'm sure, like, one side will be a little bit more aggressive than the other one. will maybe try and do something different. Um, so that's that's the basic idea of a deck builder. Now this does actually have some interesting, unique um, differences than lots of other deck builders. So one thing it's going to do is I'm just going to flip to the setup page. So in our setup page, we're going to have, of course, our main deck of cards. This is where everyone purchases cards from to make your your deck bigger, called the Galaxy Row. Now, as you can see, some cards are upside down, some are, you know, facing one direction, some are the other, um, and some are actually laying sideways. And why this works is because the Empire side can only purchase and add to their deck Empire cards. Rebel side can only add Rebel cards. Both sides can add neutral. So the Rebel cards face their direction. You know, so I can find the Empire here. I can read my Empire cards very easily. And the Rebel can read theirs. And the neutral kind of sideways. So that kind of makes an extra wiggle difference in the in the gameplay. Because most deck builders, anyone can buy any card. Um, again, this isn't all. Lots of ones that are they're coming out with now that are versus. Um, another good example would be like the Power Rangers one was like this as well. Um, but that makes it very interesting. Because then you have, when you have the chance to do stuff on your turn, you have the choice... You kind of got to go between, am I buying my cards or am I destroying my opponent's cards to limit their resources? So it's kind of an interesting back and forth. The other unique thing in here is, on the side here, we have the force meter. So there are various cards that are going to tell you to um, uh, gain force or, you know, your gain force or lose force. Um, and you move the meter closer to your side. As long as it's on your side, you'll be with the force which gives you additional abilities on certain cards. Um, and then if it's all the way on your side, you actually gain extra resources. You can buy more stuff every turn. So that's actually a pretty cool extra mechanic to keep an eye out for. Um, and then the third other big difference is you have bases. So this is basically how the game is won or lost. So each player has a, a set of base cards that essentially act as your health. Um, let me grab... Kind of just one of them. We can kind of look at one of them are. So here we have uh, Rhodia. So this has like 16 health on it um, for the Rebel side. Uh, sorry, for the Imperial side. Uh, Empire. I keep saying Imperial, I mean Empire. Um, so it basically has 16 health. So your opponents have to knock that down by 16. Now, in a basic game, you have three of them. You have one that starts out. And then you have the rest are hidden below it. So then as the game progresses, you can just, after you lose one base, you can decide, um, you can decide whether or not you want to, which, which base works best because they have different abilities. So instead of it just being a general health meter, um, so instead of it just being like a general health meter on here, let me see if I can find the picture of... The cards, yeah. So instead of it just being a general, like, health meter, it actually works to, like, oh, what ability um, works better for you? What's maybe your gameplay, how you built your deck, maybe to counter what your opponent's doing. Different things like that. Um, and then the other thing with that is you also can play these um, capital ships, which act as um, 
per semi permanent defenses. So now they basically they have a, they also have a health meter. So when you play them, they stay out. So in a typical deck building game, you play all your cards every turn. End of your turn, you discard your entire hand. All the cards you play, you draw a new hand. So as you buy a new card, your deck gets bigger and better. You keep drawing into that. Um, but everything goes away for the most part. This is a case where these cards can actually stay out then, and they provide defense for your base. So then on your opponent's turn, they have to destroy your ships before they can attack your base. So not buying the ships means you're leaving your base more vulnerable, but that could potentially be a strategy because maybe you have to decide, does it make more sense for me to buy extra, essentially extra four hit points? Or should I buy, you know, Luke Skywalker and be able to do a bunch of damage. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's an interesting back and forth dynamic of the game. Um, and all your characters are going to have some different effects on there. Um, so there's little meters on the side. They have a cost, such as how much it spends to buy your character. They have a little gun symbol, um, which is how much damage they do. So Prince of Leia, Leia can attack um, either the ships or she can attack the guys in that lineup. Um, the second one's for resources, that's how many resources you gain, which you use to purchase items. And then the force is how much force you gain every turn. And no, not every character is going to have all three of these stats. Um, and then the bottom of every card is also what's unique, is they have, um, basically what you do if you're fighting the character. So this is if, let's grab, let's just grab a first neutral character we can find. Actually, neutral characters don't have those. Let's grab the first non-neutral character we can have. Um, we have a snow speeder here. So, just to look at this. So, if I am part of the Empire, which are the red cards, I can buy this card for two. goes in my discard pile. Later, when I draw it, I can play it for two attack. also has special effects I can use um, when I play it or use it as well. Now, if I flip it over... Now, if I'm the Empire player, this is going to be laying in the row like this for me to see. But if I'm the Rebel player, it's going to be facing this way. Now, I'm going to see this side, which is the reward and the coup. I can spend a coup attack to try and defeat this, and I can potentially gain a reward. Um, what that does is it gives me a bonus for doing that. So I spend my attacks instead of attacking their base, trying to advance to win the game. I can gain a reward for it. But it also does is it limits my opponent, because now they no longer have the snow speeder. Um, so an example of one from the other side might be the scout trooper. So now this guy doesn't provide attack, but he provides two um, resources. Um, oh, this is the Empire. Uh, the colors always throw me off, because red, you usually associate red with Sith, so my brain thinks red's bad, and blue is usually associated good. This actually flips these around the other direction. So you can play this character again, you can gain this special effect, or if you're the other side, you can spend two attack to defeat them. Now if I had that snow speeder, I could use it to destroy this scout trooper, but not vice versa, because he doesn't have any attack. So you got you got a balance between, are you buying cards that let you purchase more cards? Are you buying cards that um, increase your force so you can do better force abilities. Are you buying cards that um, let you attack more? Um, and then when you're attacking, you gotta decide. Do you want to try and get rid of their ships so they don't have defenses? Do you want to get rid of their other cards so that it limits what they can do? Now keep in mind though, every time you destroy a card from the lineup, um, a new card is replaced on there. So... I'm going to go back to the main page here. So, if, for example, um, if I'm the Empire and I buy the Scout Trooper, a new card comes in to replace that. Vice versa, if the Rebel player is destroy him, a new card comes to replace that. So, sometimes it's, if there's a lower level ca card, it may not even make sense for you to destroy it, or destroy it if you're the other team, just because you might be destroying a low-level card, especially later in the game, just so that they can get a higher-level card that would be more beneficial to them. Early in the game, it might make sense, because then you're limiting on something they could use later. Um, so, yeah, there's kind of that back-and-forth, too. Um, another thing I do also like here, I just want to point out, is that if any card gets destroyed or used up or whatever, it goes to the discard pile. Um, 
But then what happens if your deck runs out, you reshuffle and play again. A lot of deck building games say once that row is empty, the game is over. Like it ends the game or you just don't have any more cards to play. You can't do anything else. Um, so I at least like that as an effect that like if if you keep destroying stuff and getting through, you might cycle through. If an opponent destroys a card early on, you're like, oh, I really wanted that card. There is a potential that it could come back through if the decks get shuffled and gets replayed again. Um, yes, that's definitely an interesting thing. So yeah, you have you have damage that stays out on your essentially your bases, which are your health, um, and you get a choose each one. You have some other different things. Um, all right, so let's look at what you get to do on your turns quick. Um, so beginning of your turn, um, if you do not have a base because your opponent destroyed it, on your last turn, you look at your base card, you shuffle and grab a new one. So if they destroy it on your turn, they can't destroy another one. So if your opponent somehow musters 50 attack, they can't wipe out your, wipe out your health in one turn. If your base only has 8 health and they have 50 attack, doesn't matter. They're only going to deal 8 damage to it, destroy it, then the rest of their stuff is lost for that turn. Um, so that's kind of neat. Then, um, if the force is on your side, you gain a resource. Uh, finally, gain the resource from each capital ship you have in play. So, normally when you play a card, you gain a, you gain the little side things, the force, the resources and stuff. Um, but since the capital ships stay in play, you gain extra resources from them every turn. This is also an additional reason for your opponents to destroy them. Um, and on your turn, you have the following things. Play a card, purchase a card, use an ability, commit an attack, resolve an attack, and end your turn. Um, playing a card is very simple. You take your yellow cubes, you have a mask from playing cards. So if I play a card with two, I gain two resource, plus what I could possibly get from the force or from my capital ships. Um, and I spend it to play a card. So I play a card by just taking a card from my hand and playing it. It doesn't matter. Once you've purchased it, you own it, you can play it as much as you want. Um, now, to play it, purchase a card, I have to spend my tokens equal to the yellow card cost on the top. Then the card goes in my discard pile, and when my deck gets reshuffled, I get it quicker. So a good strategy for deck building, of course, is if there's a card you really like to get, if you know your deck is about to run out, um, and you're going to have to reshuffle it, that's a good time to buy it, because you're going to get it quicker. Um, but I guess it doesn't really matter, but if you if you buy it right away, and you still have like 10 cards in your deck, you're going to have to wait several more turns before you're going to even have a chance to get it again. Um, but that's not saying you should always hold off, because your opponent could destroy that card. Um, so again, Rebel, or uh, the, yeah, Rebels can buy the Rebel cards, the Empire can buy um, the Empire cards, anyone can buy neutral cards, neutral cards will just look like this, uh, they will just be kind of gray, gray or white, they won't have any, uh, colored symbols on them, um, and then you always use a card ability, so once you've played a card, anytime after you've played it before the end of your turn, you can use an ability, do not have to use it immediately, so if a card says... Uh, for example, we have the uh, Z95 Headhunter. So if your opponent has a capital ship in play, draw a card. Um, so this one, you'd probably play as soon as you did. But there are going to be some that are going to be optional. Um, or conditional. There, there's various times they'll tell you when to play them. Some might say, if you do this or when you do this. So if it's an if, if that condition is met, the card activates. It says when, when you do this action... That's when it activates. Um, so yeah, it says here, like Luke Skywalker says, it says, if the force is with you, destroy a capital ship in your opponent's play. Now, so when you play him, the force might not be with you because he gains two force, but you might not. But you might not have the force yet. But it could let you play another card later on to gain it. This is a slight different from a lot of other deck building games. Lots of other deck building games, the order matters. The first card you play does resolves. Second card you play does resolves. Because sometimes they trigger off of each other. This doesn't seem to care. Um, so essentially you could sit there and play every single card in your hand down at once. And then just resolve them one at a time left to right in order. Without having to worry about which card triggered before the other card. 
um, because the abilities are going to matter. Um, although there are some that might make a difference. Uh, you can commit to an attack. So you decide to commit an attack. You decide pick what cards you've played are going to attack. Um, and you put them all together. So if you have multiple multiple troopers um, attacking someone in a row. Or multiple things attacking a base or a command ship. You kind of put them together. You add your attack token together. Very simple. So just as a gang another quick example. I could have two stormtroopers out from my starter hand. Gives me four attack. I could have them attack a, another character from the galaxy row, or I could have them attack a base. Um, and you can say, like, kind of put those cards together so you know that you're spending the attack. Um, and then you kind of want to set them off to the side you know that they've been used so you don't spend them again. Um, resolving attack is pretty simple. You just do the damage to it. If you destroy a capital ship, um... So when you're attacking, a, you attack a base. You don't attack a capital ship. You attack a base. Um, and if there are any capital ships, they're blocking it. So if I choose to attack my opponent's base, and they have two ships, and I'm doing four damage, I get to decide which of those ships or where that damage is done. I could either direct all four damage to one ship. I could spread it between the two. Um, if you destroy all of their ships and there's any remaining attack, then it goes to the base. Um, so overkilling ships doesn't have an issue, which is kind of nice. They, they could have made it just like, oh, if you destroy it, all the damage goes to that, it's done. Or you have to commit it all as one. You know, so it's kind of nice. They try to just simplify it. Um, but when you do do damage, that's when you throw these little purple counters on, whether it's the ships or the base, just to keep track. So you don't have to do, um, all the damage to a thing at once. So if I have the blockade runner, and he has four health. Um, down at that purple in the corner. I could attack you with one of my rebel troopers for two damage, do two damage to it. Um, then the next turn, I could do another two damage. I wouldn't have to do four all at one time. Uh, then they have what's called bounty hunting and sabotage. This is just the different names, like I said, of defeating the other uh, characters' groups of cards. Um, so Bounty Hunter is what the Empire does. The Rebels are sabotaging them. Um, so yeah, if I want to defeat Director Kring as the... Um, I, you know, I just have to pay for pay 5, attack with 5, and then I gain the reward. Now, I do also like the idea that it says in the book here for the frequently asked questions. Do you have to gain the reward? You do not. Now, is there a reason why I would not want to gain... Uh, three resources and two force? Probably not. There's probably no reason why I wouldn't want to do that. But there could be occasional card here or there that might say something. Maybe something tells you to draw a card and you don't want to draw a card. Um, or maybe it tells you to exile a card and you do not want to exile a card. Um, so there are op times you might not want to, which is kind of nice. Um, so they're showing you can spend... A 3 and 3 to do 6 damage to that 5 cost character. Um, and then ending your turn. So you discard all cards you had in play other than your capital ships. Um, then return your base and each capital ship you have in play to their proper orientation in your play area. Discard any cards that remain in your hand. Any resources uh, that you had and finally draw 5 new cards. Um... So that's the basis of the game. So here they're showing a little bit later in the game. You have some damage on your ships, damage on your base. Um, you know, a couple different things. This guy has two different ships out. He only has one. You know, a lot of different stuff going on there. Um, so just a couple of extra terms. A lot of these terms are uh, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Destroying lets you just remove something from the game. Discard is always from your hand. Gaining lets you just add an additional if, when. Um, so exiling might be a term you're not familiar with. You're not game. So exiling means literally removing it from the game. Um, and why do you want to do this? As you play through the game, you're going to want exile or probably get rid of your, your starter card. You just say starter on the bottom. Because uh, this guy only provides two attacks. It's going to make more sense to get rid of him. You know. Even if just for the fact I'm playing my Rebel Commander who does 3, but also has an ability. Um, because, and as you get rid of them weaker cards, you're essentially your starter cards, 
usually. You might get rid of some of the other ones for various reasons. Um, or be forced to get rid of them. It makes your deck thinner. Because you start with 10 cards in your deck. Um, you don't want to necessarily have a 60 card deck. You want to maybe have a 15, 20 card deck. Because the more powerful cards you have and the smaller size deck you have, the more often you're going to draw them and get to play them more often. Um, so if I get my Luke card, you know, I have a really powerful Rebel card. Um, I have 15 cards in my deck. I'm drawing 5 cards every turn, right? I'm going to draw him 1 every 3 turns. Now if I have a 20 card deck, that's going to be 1 every 4 turns. I have a 25 card deck. It's 1 in every 5 turns. So you can see the bigger your deck is, the harder it's going to get to get to some of your better cards. Um, you can repair, which is essentially healing yourself. Um, also, if you ever have an empty deck, you don't immediately shuffle. You do not reshuffle your deck until you have to draw a card. And this is because, let's say at the end of my turn, I drew my last five cards out of my deck. Um, so my deck is empty, but I have my discard pile. Now, any new cards I purchase during that turn before I draw a new card will go to my discard pile. So then when I have to draw a card, they'll get reshuffled back into the deck, and I can gain them right away. As opposed to if you shuffle them right away, now that card goes to my new discard pile. And I have to wait until my deck runs out to get that card. Uh, so there's a little bit of strategy there as well. Um, some frequently asked questions. There are some variants in here. So two big variants are full galaxy and secret bases. So normally at the beginning of the game, there's 10 bases per uh, side for Rebel and Empire. You have one that you recommend. One is the starter one. Um, and then you have... You pick five others. But you're only playing for three victory points. You don't have to defeat three bases. Um, so what you can do there though. Is you have all ten bases. It gives you all ten options to select through. Instead of only five. So it gives you more of a variety to play through the game. Um, as you're going through. But then they recommend now playing with up to four... Four victories to win. You can also do secret bases where instead you choose your other four bases you want for your total of five, your starting base and your other four. You know exactly which four you want and you hide them underneath. Um, but now your opponent has no idea which four you have. Um, so they can't plan a strategy knowing which ones you might even pull out. So that's just a little little difference in there. Um, I got talked about the multiplayer. Then there's adjusting the game length, which is basically just increasing the number of bases you have to beat. You want the game to go longer, say you have to defeat four or five bases. You want the game to be shorter, say you have to defeat three or two bases. Um, so you basically inflate the game just depending on how much health you want to give your characters. Now, keep in mind, though, with that is that not every base has the same amount of health. So... Unless you force each player to pick the same amount of cards with the same amount of health, um, one could potentially have an advantage over the other. Um, there's also an option to pay off neutral cards. So, normally you can only buy neutral cards. Um, so, with this option in here, I actually almost wouldn't even play this as an optional rule. I think, personally, I would just put this in the rules a as a permanent thing myself. So what you can do is you can pay their cost um, to just discard them. And this is essentially, it lets you just get rid of them cards so that somebody else can't get them. Um, so an idea there would be, we have the uh, Rodian Gunswinger, just, or the Rodan Gunswinger just sitting there. He's a bounty hunter. Now, I don't want my opponent to even have an option of purchasing him. I could pay to, but I don't really want him either. Like, he's not going to do anything for me. He's not fitting the flow of my deck. I could then just discard him to the, to the discard, Galaxy discard pile. Um, and I like the idea of that because it gives you... One, it helps, helps you limit what your opponent can also do. And then two, is it also gives you an alternate use for your resources. Because... Let's say I generate five resources, but there's really nothing I want currently that's five. Um, so rather than clogging up my deck more, I can always get rid of this. Plus, if I get rid of one, oh, I, I pay off the the two-cost uh, Rodan uh, Bounty Hunter. 
Um, now I replace it with a new card. Oh sweet, that's a card I can actually use. Or maybe that's a card I need to defeat for my opponent. Um, so I actually like that as just a general rule. Um, that's the basis of the game. So, one other thing before I look at the res or look at the, uh, look at the resources. Before I look at the decks, um, what I wanted to mention is I did like was... I can find it. Was the resource cubes. So I like the idea is as you gain a resource, you grab these little cubes so you can keep track of how much you spent. Um, I personally started doing this when I played Marvel Legendary. I bought a bunch of uh, little red cubes. Um, so then that way, like, as I play car cards down, I bought, because they have attack power and um, buying power in that game, so I just, uh, red for attack, I think, and ye yellow or green or something, I have another color for uh, the resource or purchasing power. So every time I played cards that generated them, I put that many cubes in front of me. Then that way, when I, as I spent my points or spent my resources, I can remove them, just like this game does. And I think it's very helpful than having to try and look at cards and remember, you know, sit there and try and remember which one did what. Um, now, they don't do this for the attack power, though. Um, so, it's, it's kind of interesting. The only reason I can think of that is because they literally say I should take these two cards or this card and have it fight that one. Is there might be effects in the game that say... If this fought this, do this ability. Um, as opposed to just saying, uh, as the Rebels, I generated 10 attack. I'm going to spend 10 attack to spend 5 to defeat this ship and 5 to defeat this character. Um, I, If I find out as kind of going through the game that it doesn't seem to matter, I might actually have more resource cubes just for that reason. Because it's nice to just be able to play the cards if I don't have to necessarily worry about like lining them up like they show here. Like I don't have to worry about this card specifically attacking this or this one specifically attacking that. There's no effects that matter which one attack. And it's just the fact is I've generated six attack and I'm telling, telling you where I'm putting it. I'd rather just play the cards down but like, okay, this card generated three attack, put three attack cubes over here. This generated two resource, put two resource over here. Then as I spend them, I can remove them. And I don't have to try and remember which cards I've used or which ones I've spent my points on. Um, so that's just mine. I like to get a resource. I don't know why they didn't do it for attack. Um, but I've done that in other, um, other deck building games as well. Alright, so first up, we're going to look at the starter decks. Um, so the cards that just say Star Wars on the back. Very simple. Um, all, all the same on the back, no matter what. Um, so we're going to look at... and we're gonna, I'm just going to compare these together. Now, I'm not going to do this for every single card in the game. I just want to compare the two starter decks. You can see they're basically identical, just... Um, different colors. So we get two copies each of the troopers. We have the stormtrooper and the rebel trooper. Each card again is going to have its cost. Uh, if it has a special effect, this is obviously it will have two attacks. This is going to tell what type of card it is. This is a unit as opposed to like a base um, or something like that. Then they have keywords. These only specifically say troopers. There will be various effects that might rep might reference. Um, that might reference troopers um, in there. And then on the bottom, I do like to actually put starters. I don't know if you asked me, I had to put Empire and Rebel, but that's still very helpful. Again, I've played other deck building games where they don't list, list what cards are starter cards. So at the end of the game, you're always trying to reshuffle, trying to remember, oh yeah, these were my starter cards, these ones worked. Um, where these are never going to be just included, in general, never going to be just included into a deck. Um, the other thing I do like about that is also means I could potentially put a Stormtrooper and a Rebel Trooper in the deck. as maybe like a one cost, like a special ability. Um, you know, there's no reason why they couldn't add these just as regular cards. And it's easy to tell which ones are the starter ones and which ones are the regular ones. Because they could have the same name. Um, all right, so we got two copies of each of those. We have, I think, three, four, 
five, six, seven. So we have seven copies of each of these shuttles. So we have a little bit of attack power, but not much to begin with. Mainly we have resource power. So we have seven each of these, which have um, one resource each um, in their transports. So in my opening hand, I draw five cards. There's a potential I could draw five of these so I could boast on the beginning of my turn. I'm going to be my first turn. I'm probably going to be able to draw five cards um, or play five resources. Um, there's a chance that I could draw one of the other cards, um, one of the troopers or one of the other unit cards we have here. So I'll show off in a second, which, um, which can give me a different effect. So and now there's, you start with 10 starter cards. So the first turn, you're going to draw half your deck. Second turn, you're going to draw the other half. Um, now not having played this yet, have to see how I mean, it's a versus game and not playing against an, an AI at all. I don't think it's going to be an issue having that. You're just going to kind of have like a free turn essentially. But I know like games where you're playing against something like DC deck building or Marvel Legendary deck building. Um, when you're playing against an AI and more cards come out. Um, especially Marvel Legendary is terrible for this. Because... Your first turn is basically not doing a whole lot. Your second turn is not doing a whole lot. It's by your third turn when you finally get the cards you've purchased. So you're three turns into the game fighting against something that's actively trying to hurt you and you can't stop it. Um, but this, since it's back and forth versus, it's probably not that big of a deal. Um, yeah, so you get those. And then your tenth cards is you're each going to get a separate different card. The Inquisitor or the Temple Guardian, which will have no... Inherent effect, it says, when you play this card, choose to gain either one attack, one resource, or one force. Um, so this is really cool. So basically, you could end up with three three attack on a turn. Um, or you can end up with uh, your five resources, your extra resource. Or you can also gain the force right away. So like maybe early in the game, you don't really care about force just because... Um, you're not going to be able to do anything. Here's our force board, by the way. A little double-sided card. I didn't actually show this one off yet. Because um, you start in the middle. So even during your first two turns, you mostly do if you, if you went for force for both of them. You're only going to be two over. You're not going to be enough to gain your extra resource yet. Um, but if what might end up happening is you know, why would you play Force early on in the game? Because it's when you start, start using advantage. But also because, let's say I have... I draw one of these cards and I draw f four resource cards. Um, if there's not enough stuff to buy five points worth of cards, there's only four points of cards to do, I could be like, well, I'll buy my four points of cards and then one attack's not going to be enough to do anything so I can play the Force, Right? So that's definitely a reason to do it. If, if you're not going to have enough of one of the other two resources, or even let's say you draw both of your, um, your attack cards, and you get this card out, you have three attack. But the highest attack on there is everything's either four or higher, or you have a two. You don't need that third attack. You don't really need the one resource, maybe. Again, you can always play the fourth. Um, but, and plus, also, get, additionally, as you're getting rid of cards out of the game, um, you're going to get rid of your other starter cards. You'll probably keep this one for a while because it has more flexibility. So that's definitely a fun a fun extra card to have. Alright, then we have our bases. So each one is going to have... Now these actually have the symbols on the back because they never get mixed into a deck. Um, let me kind of back these up a bit. Now these are the two they say to start, start the game with. Now... As you're playing through the game, um, or you play more and more often, I would imagine you could opt to either A, just not use these anymore, and be like, hey, let everyone pick whatever they want to start with. Uh, maybe have them hidden at the beginning of the game. You flip over your first one so the other opponent can't see what you're going to play as. Um, you know, Or you could start with this and then play with that extra so you normally have to only beat three bases. You could be, now you have to beat four bases. So basically the first one is just kind of a give me, a give me base. You know, who cares? You're not really well blocking it. Let me take some extra damage. Um, 
You know that. But they both have eight health. You have Lothal and Dantwing. Um, and then I'm going to kind of just keep throwing each of these up. Now, I don't know if these are going to be symmetrical or not. Um, they might be just because of the bases. I'm imagining they're going to be pretty equal. But we have Corellia and Moncala. So we have Imperial Shipyards. Uh, when you reveal Corella, purchase an Empire neutral card from the Galaxy roll for free and add it to your hand. Um, and Industrial Strength is the same thing. So you have a Rebel or neutral card. Now that's actually really good because uh, when you first reveal it at the beginning of the turn, you can potentially gain a 4 cost higher for free. Um, and it's 10 health, so not, not too bad. Now right off the bat here, we're going to get some differences. Um... So, I'm not sure if these got, like, mixed up or if they're all, all good. I'm going to pause for one sec. <clears throat> all right. So, now they start having a little, uh, they still have a couple more symmetrical abilities, and then they start going a little bit, a little bit different, which actually makes the game better. Because if each side was the exact same cards, then it really doesn't make sense to necessarily have this be, oh, this is this card, this is that. You could just be like, you know, why have this many health points? I expect I have 40 total health points, right? So this actually makes it kind of interesting. So we have uh, Tesla and Dagobah, which are the Spice Mines. When you reveal Tesla, exile up to three cards from your hand or discard pile. Or Dagobah does the same thing. And these have 12 health. Now again, this is very nice because it lets you get rid of them. Um, basic cards. Now... Oh, then the way the mechanic works is once you once you defeat a base, you get to pick your second one. You might not want this necessarily as your second base. You might want it as your second base, depending on how you want to play. Because if you do this, do you want to exile, like, let's say, turn three or four? Do you want to exile potentially three cards, leaving your deck that early? Yes, you'll draw your extra cards early. But if you get rid of your basic cards too quick, you haven't bought enough cards or replace them um or your deck has somehow been limited by other means exiling extra cards might not be super helpful later in the game this might be very helpful but maybe you've already found other ways to exile stuff and this is also why you pick five cards you have four other cards and you pick so if you're playing your regular game you have your base set and you have four other cards in your deck and you pick between two more for your three points so you have different options. Like, again, maybe you picked this originally. Oh, yeah, I'm going to need to be able to exile cards later. But maybe just during the game, you've bought stuff well enough and you don't feel like you need to exile anything, right? So there we go. You can just not pick this to play it. Um, similar to these ones, we have Mustafar and Elderon. So Vader's Castle and Royal Influence. You gain, when you reveal, gain four force. Uh, just basically puts the force on your side all the way. Um, uh, fair, fairly well. Now again, if you're not playing any cards that use force cards, maybe you ended up not buying into them that turn or that game or whatever, for whatever reason they just weren't revealing stuff, you don't have to use this card. Um, we have Taffering and by Bespin, uh, Trading Post and Cloud City. When you play a neutral card the first time each turn, draw a card. Um, there you go. So that's just very simple there. You're getting extra card every time you play neutral. Uh, works with that. So now is where they all start to get very different. So we have um, Ord, Mentel, and Jetta. So Bounty Hunter. When Ord, Mentel is, is your base, you can Bounty Hunt one neutral unit in the galaxy roll each turn. Using its cost as its target value. If you defeat that card, gain a resource equal to its cost. So this lets you just go ahead and take, take them out and gain extra resources. Um, otherwise we have Rebel Extremists. Well, as your base, add the first neutral card you purchase each turn to your hand. You must exile that card at the end of your turn. Um, so the one lets you buy it, you basically get rid of it, gain resources for the turn. Um, and then the Rebel side lets you, um, purchase it, you get it to your hand so you can use that ability right off the back. But then you no longer, then you have to get rid of that card completely. Um, so it's a very interesting, different way to play it, depending on what you kind of need to do. Um, and then we have, now we're going to get some, some big differences. Now, one thing that is very noticeable is the Rebel side has less, less health overall than the Empire side, which kind of makes sense, but it's an interesting dynamic. Um, 
that they don't share the same health codes all the way across. So Rhoda is Imperial Occup Occupation. When you reveal Rhoda, and I apologize as I butcher all these Star Wars names, uh, deal one damage to the enemy base for each enemy card in the Galaxy Row. Then discard those cards from the Galaxy Row. That's actually pretty powerful if you play at the right time. Opponent just destroys your base. They have a lot of their cards out. Drop this. You tell us and maybe you might destroy their base right back. Um, then we have Tatooine, a new hope. When you reveal Tatooine, swap a card in the Galaxy Row with a Rebel card from the Galaxy uh, discard pile and gain one resource. Um, so this lets you basically just pull a card out from the discard pile you want and get your resource for a potential chance to recruit them. Um, Alright, Endor and Hoth. Um, Endor has the finest Legion. While in Endor, you're each your trooper and vehicle units gain one attack. So this actually makes your base guys a little bit more stronger, which is kind of fun. Um, or Hoth is Planetary Shield. One Hoth is your base, prevent the first two damage dealt to Hoth each turn. So this just makes it harder to take out Hoth. Cool. Um, Coruscant and Sol Solus. Uh, so on Coruscant, Galactic Rule. When your turn begins, one of the top two cards of the Galaxy deck. Place one on top of the deck and discard the other. Um, so you just stack your deck a little bit. Um, so you know, you, oh, I'm going to buy this card. I know what card's coming out next. And Massing the Fleet. When Solus is your base, place the first card you purchase um, each turn on top of your deck. That is a very powerful card. Um, cards like the one be able to see what's coming next with the Coruscant is very nice Be able to just automatically put the card you buy on top of your deck is very powerful because if you have another card that says draw a card you automatically get that card and then our last two bases are the Death Star and Yavin 4 the Death Star fire when ready spend four resources to destroy a capital ship your opponent has in play or a capital ship in the Galaxy Row and Yavin 4 is Hidden Operations. When your opponent discards a card from their hand during your turn, deal 2 damage to their base. Um, yeah, so that could be very powerful depending, again, what your opponent has a lot of capital ships, Death Star is going to be a great one to pop out. You know, if your opponent has a lot of stuff, you can make your opponent discard stuff, Yavin 4 will be very powerful. Um, also, just even outside of the abilities, Sometimes it might just be the health thing. You might choose to just pick a 16 health versus a 12 health health card just because it keeps you alive maybe an extra turn. Um, so those are all different bases. Um, yeah, then, all right. So we're going to start just looking at single cards now. I'm not going to show Rebel and um, Empire next to each other. But we do have this extra doubt. This is the Outer Rim Pilot deck. So this is all the same exact cards. Uh, ooh, we have sequence cards back there. All the same cards are just neutral characters that anyone can buy at any time. They're always there. If they get discarded, they go back to this card. They get exiled, they go back to this deck. Um, and this is just because anyway, everyone always, no matter what, has option of spending two to buy a two resource card. Which are just good general replacements for your um, your regular cards. Uh, with the differences, these have transport, which might be affected. These guys won't. But it also says you can exile and gain a force. Um, so yeah, it, it's a very... It, it's a way sometimes early on you might buy like one or two of these just to up your deck. Then you can afford to exile the smaller cards. Because one of these can take place of two of the other cards. Um... So those are right there. Then we also have our turn sequence cards that you get two of. Um, it explains what your turn is. And then we have the quick reference. It shows, it's just the opposite side. Just shows some of the extra things to remember. Target, cost, exile, hit points, reward. Um, card abilities are optional. You can choose not to resolve them, which I love. I love that as a fact that you're not forced to do anything. The only thing you are forced to do is if you start using the ability, you have to do all of the ability or as much as you can. So if the thing says, you know, discard up to three cards or exile up to three cards, you can do zero to that many because that's up to. But if it says, um, you know, discard 
three cards from your hand, you have to discard three cards from your hand to do the rest of the effect. Um, cool. Alright, so let's hop in and start looking at all of the cards. We're going to start with neutral cards. So we have two copies of the Z95 Headhunter. Uh, two attack is a fighter. Your opponent has a capital ship in play. Draw one card. Um, I'm not going to read the flavor text unless it's something interesting. Just because I uh, want to kind of fly through these. Um, we have two copies of the Jawa Scavenger. It's between two resources. Exile this unit to purchase a card from the Galaxy Discard Pile as if it were in the Galaxy Row. Oh, that's actually pretty fun. Um, get rid of him for his extra two resource, but you can also gain a card. We have two Rodan Gunslingers, who are Bounty Hunters. This unit gains two attack while attacking a target in the Galaxy Row. Um, cool. So if you choose to do that, you get four. Two of the Talgor Mystics. Uh, who has two force, exile this unit to exile one card from your hand or discard pile. Um, we have one Lobot. Now, some of the characters have this little star symbol next to them. That means they are a unique character, so there will only ever be one of them um, in the set. Now, I'm not, again, not going to say they won't release expansions that have extra versions of these. Um, they might have some that are one timing a rebel deck, maybe another time in there. If they add them, there might be rules that say you can only have one in play at a time. But currently, right now, it just means they're specific. But they might also have um, things that specifically mention that character. So this is going to say when you play Lobot, choose to gain either two attack, uh, resource, or force. We have Bosk, the bounty hunter. When boss defeats a target in the galaxy, they'll gain one force. We have two copies of the Fang Fighter. Uh, when you purchase this unit, add, add it to your hand and draw one card if the force is with you. So that's actually a cool idea. So I think now if you have the force, you gain an extra card. Two copies of the Twi'lek Smuggler, who's a scoundrel. Uh, place the next three cards you purchase on top of your deck. Um, so the idea of this, I think, Scoundrel Bounty Hunter. I think the Bounty Hunter is supposed to be the bad version, and the Scoundrel is supposed to be, like, the good version, like the mission, you know, um, essentially. Um, there are also generic capital ships. You have two copies of the Sea Rock Cruiser. Um, damage one card, discard one card from your hand to repair three damage from your base. So that's very helpful. We have Gengar. When Gengar defeats a target in the galaxy, we'll gain two resource. Two copies of the Quarring Mercenary, who's a trooper. Uh, when you purchase this unit, exile one card from your hand or discard pile. Up to two cards instead if the force is with you. We have two copies of... The HWK290 Transport Exile this unit to repair up to 4 damage from your base. I love that there's so much exiling. Uh, that's one thing I always find somewhat annoying about deck building games. Is they get... Um, it's sometimes so hard to have cards to exile. Which is sort of the whole point. You want to have a consistent way to exile cards. Um... So even these ones that just pay exile themselves. It's like, hey, I use that effect, now it's done. Um, we have three copies of the Blockade Runner. Um, so again, when you play this card, you gain uh, one attack, one resource. Then every turn you I'm at, you gain one extra resource as long as it's out. Uh, so it doesn't do anything special, but it is helpful that way. IG-88. Um, when IG-88 defeats target in your galaxy row, exile one card from your hand or discard pile. Two copies of the Nebulon B Frigate. Choose to repair three damage from your base or gain three resource. Nice. Um, getting towards the end of our neutral card, we have Lando Calarizian, who's a scoundrel. Draw one card, the force is with you. Your opponent discards one card from their hand. Java Sail Barge. Add a bounty hunter from your discard pile to your hand. And then finally, Java the Hut. 
uh, who costs eight when you get you two of each. Uh, exile one card from your hand to draw one card. Two cards instead if the force is with you. Um, nice. So you get rid of a cheap card. Um, but if you have the force, you can get two. So if you can hang on, you can actually get a better deal out of that. All right, those are our neutral cards. Let's take a look at our Rebel Alliance. Um, all right, so we have the uh, two copies of the X-Wing. Sorry, not the X-Wing, that's a Y-Wing. Um, fighter, exile this unit to deal two damage to your opponent's base or capital ship they have in play. Um... So yeah, if you just need to finish them off, this might be... So is it worth having two attacks every turn? Or is it worth getting rid of this card to do that extra two damage? Hey, I can finish off their guy. They don't get an extra resource. Or I can finish off their base. Um, and then the bottom just a reward. Gain one resource if they're defeated. We have uh, Baze Mulbus, who's uh, gained one attack for each rebel in your base... Uh, Rebel base in your opponent's victory pile. So if you're losing, you get stronger. It's kind of fun. Reward is a gain of force. We have two snow speeders. Uh, vehicle, your opponent discards one card from their hand. Uh, reward, exile one card from your discard pile. So I wonder, what if I do this? Would this be easier to do? So let's do this. If we zoom this back out a little bit like we had before, we'll play them this direction. So there's our reward. So we'll play a character and then we'll flip them over to this side. There's our no speeder. That way you can see the rewards as well. Um, and be able to read them easier. So we have two copies of the Duro Spy. Your opponent must choose to either discard one card from their hand, or you gain one force. And then they have exile one card from your hand or discard pile. So this is, again, this is a nice way for, like, at, as the other player, I can defeat this card, limit my opponent from having it, plus I get to exile a card which makes my deck better. So I think this game is going to be very fast-paced. It'll be very interesting to see how this all works. Uh, Rebel Transport Unit. Choose to repair two damage from your base or gain one re resource. We have Churik Imwe. Um, these are the guys from the movie, which again, I still can't remember the name of. Oh my god, it's going to drive me nuts. Um, it was... I don't remember. I don't know. Um, anyhow, uh, the force is with you. Chirag Imwe gains two attack. Um, cool. So he gets. So normally he just has two force, but if you have it, he gains two attack as well. So again, that could be a way to play him, and then if you gain the force later on, he gains it. So reward is gain two force. We have two copies of a Rebel Commando. Your opponent discards one card from their hand at random if the force is with you. Ooh, random effects always suck. Um, so awesome. I hit they're playing that card. Uh, gain two force. We have three X-Wings. If the force is with you, draw one card. Um, cool. So you can definitely see why the force is going to make a difference in here. Um, and again, that's going to be a back and forth battle to keep those. Uh, you gain three resource. We have Chewbacca. Here, who's a scoundrel. If you have another unique unit in play, draw one card. Nice. Ooh. And he can gain you three force for defeating him. Uh, Jane Urso. Uh, if your opponent's hand... Uh, look at your opponent's hand. If the force is with you, place one card from the top of their deck. Place one card from their hand on top of their deck. So basically all this again works is you do as much as possible. So you play this card, you look at their hand. You know, at least minimum, you just see what they have. Um, then if you have the force, you can also place one card from their hand on top of their deck. But now, like I said, you can delay these abilities and use them later. 
but you have to do it all at once. So you can't look at your hand, then see, okay, they have a card I'd really like to get rid of. I'm going to play this other card, gain the force, then I'm going to make them discard. Nope, you have to do it all at once. If you play this and you look at your hand, if you don't have the force, you don't gain the second ability. Her ability is used up for that turn. Uh, gain three force for reward. We have the U wing. So our X wings, our Y wings, and our U wings. Um, transport for the forces with three pair three damage from your base. Whoops. You have to probably pull them down in just a sec. Uh, gain four resource. Let's drop these guys off. We have the Hammerhead Corvette. Um, exile this capital ship to destroy a capital ship. Your opponent has in play or an enemy capital ship in the galaxy role. So that's actually fun. Um, they have something, I think most of the capital ships have had roughly about the same amount of health. But it's nice that you can just straight up destroy one. We have good old Han Solo, of course. Um, draw two cards. Two cards instead if you have the Millennium Falcon in play. Now that's fun. That's the that's the kind of stuff I like to see in these games. Um, you're going to get a bonus if you have that specific card. Now there has, hopefully there's more ways to search a deck or find that. Um, but that's definitely fun. Uh, reward gain two resources and two force. We have Cassian Andor. Uh, Trooper and Cassian defeats target in the Galaxy Row. Your opponent discards one card from their hand. Uh, gain two res three resources and two force. We have the B Wing. Uh, your opponent must choose to either discard one card from their hand or this unit gains two attack. Cool. Um, so your opponent has to decide. That's always fun too. Um,. You already have five attacks. It's giving them seven attack. Can they afford that? Um, and again, they can always look at like, well, oh, my base only has three health, whatever. You know, that's not going to matter. But the thing is, although you can't spread the damage between the base and the regular thing, you don't know what else they have in their hand. So they can use that seven damage to destroy a couple of big troops. But again, you can only, you can only spread the... I guess that is the reason I said earlier why you couldn't spread the get why you couldn't just put damage counters out. Because the idea would be if I have seven damage, I'd have to do seven to a base or seven to one trooper. If their trooper only has five health, that seven damage isn't going to mean anything. I guess, okay, that makes sense on why I said I wasn't sure why you couldn't just combine all the, all the attack power together. But that makes sense. Um, oh, this is exile up to two cards from your hand or discard pile. We have Princess Leia, who's pretty powerful. Two in each of her stacks. Um, officer, when you purchase a Rebel card from the Galaxy Roll for free, if the Force is with you, place that card on top of your deck. So like most of these games, you start getting towards the end, you start getting really powerful cards like this. Um, gain three resources and six attack. Or six, six force, or three force. I keep reading that six. We have the Mon Calamari Cruiser. We have two copies of that. Um, three attack, uh, so it doesn't gain you extra resources every turn, but it does have six health. We have the Millennium Falcon, five damage and two resources. Transport, add a unique unit from your discard pile to your hand. So if uh, Han Solo is defeated, you could get him back and then combine them powers. Uh, purchase a card of your fraction, your faction for free. And then finally, we have Luke Skywalker, who's a Jedi. So he's the only Jedi we have in this set so far. Uh, six attack and two force. If the force is with you, destroy a capital ship your opponent has in play. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Um, and then gain four resources and four uh, force power. Um, yeah, so those are the Rebels. Um... Now, I haven't compared them to other stuff, but it seems like a lot of destroying capital ships, uh, lots of stuff going with the force. Very interesting. Um, yeah, all right. So let's uh, hop into the... We'll hop in to look at the Empire side, and then we'll kind of talk about a little bit review of everything. All right, on to our uh, Empire cards. We have three cards. Uh, in between, a quick pause there. Rogue One, which is the name of the movie I was thinking of. Um, 
so yeah, the, this set seems to seems to encompass uh, the first the four, five, six, and Rogue One. Um, all right, there we go. So we have three Tie Fighters. Uh, you can have a capital ship in play, draw a card. Uh, cool. So that's, so it's going to make gain some resource, and we have gain three resources. We have Admiral Petit or Piet. Uh, officer when Admiral Petit is in play, each of your capital ships gain one attack. Ooh, so, so far, that's what we're going for. We have gain one force. We have two copies of the Kai Bomber. Uh, fire, discard one card from the Galaxy Row. Uh, Kai Bomber is carrying enough firepower to destroy virtually any target. Uh, exile one card from your hand or discard pile. Two copies of the Scout Trooper. Uh, reveal the top card of the Galaxy deck. If it's an Empire card, gain one fourth. If it's an enemy card, discard it. Um, exile one card from your hand or discard pile. We have two copies of the Death Trooper. While the Force is with you, this unit gains two attack. And so they become five. Um, for three cost is not bad. Um... Gain two force. We have two copies of the Kai Interceptor. Uh, we have the top card of the Galaxy deck. If it's an Empire card, draw one card. If it's an enemy card, discard it. Interesting. Uh, gain three resource. We have three copies of the Gazanti. Uh, let me scooch these over a bit. Uh, Gazanti Cruiser, discard one card from your hand to draw a card. We have Moth Jirdrag. Um, with the top card of the Galaxy deck, if there's a forces with you, you may swap that card with a card in the Galaxy row. Um, gain three force. We have General Veers. If you have a trooper or vehicle in play, draw a card. Drawing cards is very powerful. Gain three resources. An ATST. Two copies of those. Discard one card from the Galaxy Row. Two ch chain mounted blaster tanks. I've never heard of a funnier sentence. Um, Exit up the two cards from your hand or discard pile. We have two copies of the Landing Craft. Uh, choose to gain four resources or repair four damage from your base. And they have gain four resources. We have Director Krinik. Um, draw one card, two cards instead, if your base is the Death Star. Nice. Now, uh, gain three um, resource and two uh, force. We have Bulb Effect. The bull effect defeats a target in the galaxy. Roll die card. He is no good to me dead. That's a terrible bull effect impression. Um, Alright, let's drop those down. Gain three resources and two, uh, two force. We have two copies of the Imperial Cruiser. Uh, we'll f the Imperial Cruiser in play each year fighter units gains one attack. Grand Moff Tartan. Um, she's one of your big, big bad guys. Uh, add an Empire card from the Galaxy Road to your hand. You must exile that card at the end of your turn. Hey, a free card every turn's not bad. Um, you know, if, if for nothing else, right? Uh, reward, three resource and three force. We have one copy of an at which is not unique, but we only get one copy of it. Uh, add a trooper from your discard pile to your hand. Uh, purchase a card of your faction for free. We have two Star Destroyers. Um, just seven with four attack. Just pretty powerful. And then our final one, of course, is Darth Vader. Uh, well, it's a Sith. It's our only Sith in a set. Well, your force is with you. Darth Vader gains four attack. Um, which is 10, which is crazy, right? I can take out pretty much any anything except for a few bases. Um... Gain four resources and gain four force. All right.
So, what do we have going on here? So, that's all our cards. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, the sets and the cards. So, if all of you wanted to see was just what was in the deck and the rules, that's all I got for you. Thanks for watching the video. Otherwise, we're going to kind of just like do a quick review without having played it yet. Um, so, the Empire cards seem to be all about controlling the state of the board. Um, they get to destroy stuff in the Galaxy Row or see what's coming up next. Kind of control what's, what's going to be coming out or destroying that, getting rid of that. They had a lot of cards that dealt with doing that. Um, discarding a card from Galaxy Row. Um, getting to draw extra cards. Uh, revealing the card from the Galaxy deck. Um, they didn't have a lot of stuff to deal with the Force. They had some other cards that supported each other. If you have capital ships in play, you gain a bonus. You have capital ships, you gain this. So they gained the so the Empire seems all about having capital ships building up that defense, gaining bonuses for having that defense. Um, as well as already having a couple of bases with more health. Um, and then controlling what's on the board. The rebels, on the other hand had a lot more stuff about using the force if you have the force you gain extra abilities you gain extra cards you get extra effects so they're all about playing around with the force and this more or less makes sense because if you're talking the original series the only force user really in the empire was vader um then later on eventually you had emperor palpatine who's not in this set um so yeah, you only have one person, even like when, even watch the uh, Empire Fleeger commanders really didn't believe in the Force anyhow. They'd be like, oh, you're old mystical magic. Um, so it makes sense that they're more about their military might. They're playing on that side. Um, and then the Rebels, even though they had, a, even realistically, the only Force user in the, most of the movies was Luke... Um, again, Yogi would be in there and Obi-Wan, but neither of them are on the set, nor were they a, a, around for very long. Um, but we do have a couple of the characters that were Force-sensitive from Rogue One as well. Um, they also believed in it. They also knew about it. They kind of were like, hey, this is our... Hey, we can get Jedi's. That's awesome. We, we like Jedi's. So they use the Force a lot more. Um, and they have a lot, a lot more stuff with... You know, dismantling other little things. They have, like, some healing effects. Um, but a lot of stuff, if you have the Force, they do extra things. Um, neutral cards, on the other hand, are just kind of... They're right in the middle. They just... They provide very generic effects. Lots of, lots of stuff with exiling. You play them, you exile them. You get rid of them. They come in, they help you, they leave. Um, and they have a couple that lean one direction or the other. Um... Yo, know, but yeah, so it's a very, very interesting effect. And then also, again, we just noted, we don't have some of the bigger characters in there. We don't have Emperor Palpatine. We don't have Yoda. We don't have Obi-Wan. Um, you know, there are, like, no Ewoks in there. Um, there's no uh, Hoth Troopers. There's, uh, let's say there's one at, -AT. Um, so there's a lot of, obviously, a lot of stuff that's missing. There's no C-3PO or R2-D2 for the uh, Alliance, or the Rebel side. Um, you know, there's definitely a lot of different stuff they can add. So, the question will be, so if they make, a, they make more sets is, are they going to go the route of making expansion? Which just adds, hey, here's some more, um, here's some more Empire cards, here's some more Rebel cards. Go at it. Here, here's some extra ones there. Are they going to make new base sets based on the other trilogies? Are we going to get one that's the prequels and we're going to get like Anakin and Qui-Gon and Padme um, and a lot more in like uh, uh, oh why is my brain just not working on who these people are? Um, Darth Maul and General Grievous. Are we going to get a lot of those guys? Uh, maybe Senator um, Senator Palpatine um his regular name, which I can't think of either. Um, are we gonna get more guys like that in there, like a prequel that way? And are we gonna get like this a, a base set for like the sequel, 
the sequels with like Kylo Rang and um <clears throat> Wow, you know, my brain just blanked on every other character in that movie. Um <clears throat> excuse me. Um like Ray and um all them and maybe even get some of the older versions of like Luke and like Han and Chewie and some of those characters. Um you know, so I'll be interested to see if they do that. If those would be like just add-on sets, if they'll be full base games. Hey, you can sit here and play these. Like each side will have a little bit differences, and then now you can mix and match them with these and create your own game. Um, and how they will go about mixing and matching sets. Like you got a base game, um, you got you got a small set, which so you didn't say. Um, top of my deck. So uh, there are. 90 Galaxy cards in this set. So that's the Rebel, Alliance, and uh, Neutral cards. So there's 90. So if you added a base game with another 40 cards, it's 130 cards, right? It's not terrible. But the thing is, now if you add another 90 set base, you have to figure out how to mix and match them. And I'm sure one way they'll probably say is, take one Rebel one rebel from one set, one empire from the other, or you can kind of mix and match however you want. But maybe they'll say something like have X number of eight cards, X number of seven cards, X number of five cards. That's probably the best way to do it. So it's so it'd be a century like if um you know like if if one way I want this like this card I gotta take out something of the equal equal cost amount so the cost of the deck stays the same. Um but yeah, you can definitely see him doing that. Plus, there's all the other series, of course. There's all the different cartoons. There's, like, the Clone War cartoons, the original, the new one, the Rebels cartoons. There's the new TV series, um, like, the Mandalorian, the, you know, Obi-Wan series. A lot of stuff there they can definitely draw from. Um, there's so much Star Wars content out there. They could definitely do a ton of extra sets. It's just whether they're going to keep releasing big, kind of release big box sets or they're going to keep releasing small sets. The up and down side of it is if there was big box sets, definitely going to be a lot more cards, a lot more characters getting hit. hit. Um, I almost would prefer a bunch of smaller sets. Like maybe go like two smaller sets, then maybe like one big, bigger base set. Just that way you could, or go a second big base set right away. So I could play a four player game right away. You only have all four decks to ma mash together. Then do a bunch of small sets. Because I'm also worried that you're going to end up with too many overlapping characters. Um, although, personally, I don't care if I have old Luke, young Luke. You know, if I have, you know, Kid Anakin from Pod Racing. And I have, you know, Jedi Anakin. And I have Darth Vader. And I have, you know, you know, different versions of Darth Vader. Different versions of Luke. Like, old Luke, young Luke. You know, Farmer Luke. Um, I honestly don't care if there's multiple versions of every character. Um, you could have the unique symbol. Maybe it says, hey, I can't play the same character twice. You know, if I have a Luke Skywalker out, I can't play an additional Luke Skywalker. So if I've bought three Luke Skywalkers, you know, I can't play multiple. Or even say you can't have multiple of them in your deck and you can't play multiple at the same time. Um, and even have like a weird legendary rule of like, if you draw a new Luke card and he's already in the galaxy row, he replaces the old one. So, like, you could do something like that which would make you limit your deck, your building of your main deck, but that'd be kind of an interesting thing to do as well. Um, I think there's a lot of potential here. It'd be interesting to see what else they come out with. The game just came out, or it's just, just came out now, so, um, yeah, I haven't heard anything more of what they're planning on doing, but there's definitely a lot they can do. Um, if they don't think they're going to get years of expansions out of this, you don't think the game's going to do well, drop like three big base sets. Do do like one for the sequel, one for the prequels, and at least have like that many extra characters. Um, the third thing I could also see them doing for a small expansion would be kind of cool. Or like two extra expansions if they wanted to do something different. Um, instead of focusing on like a series would be... Um, Add a third faction, you know, add, add uh, mercenaries or bounty hunters um, as a third faction people could play. Then you could mix and match, or you could have a three-player game. You know, that'd be kind of a neat idea too, wouldn't it? Um, one, one could play one, one could play the third, the other one could play mercenaries. 
um, which could attack, which would basically be like, I don't know, I'm gonna attack both, you know, um, or even have someone to, you know, two mercenaries to play. If you have fourth, I don't know if you have fourth faction in there somewhere you could play, um, maybe even just make a general neutral fra fra faction, you know, possibly, um, something like that might be interesting. Even had small ones are like, okay, we have allies. Like, we don't, again, we didn't have C3PO. We didn't have, um, you know, uh, R2D2 and stuff. You could add, like, here's, like, a droid pack. So we're gonna add a bunch of droids in the sets. Now we have droids, you have droid numbers, things like that. Um, definitely be some cool things there. All right, that is what we have, though, for... The Star Wars deck clothing game. This is quite a long video, um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more content like this, whether it's more deck building games, I always do more of them. If you'd like to see more Star Wars content, I don't buy a lot of Star Wars stuff. Um, I like it in general, um, but I wouldn't mind going through more of it. Um, if there's a game or something you'd like to recommend, maybe I could try and check it out. If you like deck building, I know I haven't really done anything with Lord of the Rings. I am hoping to sometime start posting Arkham stuff. Um, let me know. Anything else you'd like to see? See you guys later. Bye.